My name is Nicole Van Hattam and I am a workplace wellness warrior. What does that mean? That basically means that after spending almost 25 years sitting behind a desk and being very successful, I now basically go back into the workplace and teach people how to take care of themselves. One of the things I noticed when I was in the corporate world, I lived behind my desk. I worked about 16-hour days. I was head of human resources for an international bank. I loved my job. I served my team and I took really great care of approximately 600 people that worked in the organisation. I took care of everybody else except myself. This was me about approximately four or five years ago. This is how I lived behind a desk. I was fat, sick and successful. Successful. Now, your definition of success is an individual one, but in general, I was considered a success. I had a top corporate job. I had wonderful salary and bonuses. I could travel. I had all of the wonderful reputation that comes with uh, being a change maker in my organisation. The success I didn't have was internal. One day I said to my boss, who was the CEO and who I worked very closely with, that I really needed to get away. I was successful, but I was sick. I looked in the mirror and I thought, that is not me. That is something that happened to me. I was in my late 30s. I had a long list of illnesses and I went to the doctors and I said, here are all the things that are not right with me. And the doctor's response, what do you think they said? It's just normal aging. I'm 38. I shouldn't have a long list of health complaints. I shouldn't wake up every day balancing pain to perform in my job. I was supposed to thrive, wasn't I? Because they couldn't diagnose anything that they could label was wrong with me, they simply dismissed it as, well, it's just aging and maybe you're a bit stressed, you should go on a holiday. Not one of the medical profession actually sat down with me and asked me any questions about my lifestyle. They wanted to give me pills and potions and send me on my way. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of deep respect and appreciation for the medical profession. I think we're missing the point, though. We are more than a medical condition. We are holistic human beings. And it takes more than pills and potions and a little bit of a holiday to thrive in the nine to five. By the end of my little talk, I'm going to get all of you to walk away with a simple technique to remember five things that you can do to really thrive in the nine to five. And I'm going to give you one little hint right now. It's on the end of your arm. I met a couple of the students outside and we shared something very exciting. And by the end of the talk, they're going to come up to me and they're going to tell me what they learnt. And they're not allowed to check their notes. It's high five to thrive in the nine to five. High five to thrive in the nine to five. These are my five tips for really living well behind the desk. Now, whether the desk is your student study desk or whether the desk is the typical nine to five workplace. There are a few fundamental things that we need to embed into our daily success routine in order to really not just survive, but to thrive. We are natural beings. We are not meant to live in concrete jungles surrounded by technology, although we do enjoy our technology and it's very useful. However, we're meant to live in sunshine. We're meant to breathe clean air. We're not meant to live inside for endless hours of every day. We are meant to drink a lot of clean, pure water, not bottled water. We are supposed to be eating natural foods, foods that were created perfectly designed for this perfect design, not the packaged, processed, chemicalized, well-marketed versions of food. So my top five, because I want to get on and really embed this into you, so that by the end of this talk, you walk away from this presentation and today, you start to implement it. Now, I really love doing my talks with audience participation, so I will be asking you at some point to get involved, so stay tuned. My top number one for thriving in the nine to five, number one 
is get off your bum. We spend approximately 7.7 .7 hours in sedentary activities every single day. How many of you sit like this? How many of you sit like this? And we've seen lots of people like this. The easiest and the simplest thing you can do to help your body to thrive and your mind to thrive in the nine to five is to get off your bum. And I'm not talking about once a day at the end of your work day or when you go for a bathroom break or when you have the fifth cup of coffee for the day. I'm talking about moving your incredible body as often as you possibly can. Look at my body when I sit like this. What do you notice? Does this look natural? Does it look vibrant? Does it look energetic? I actually don't like myself sitting like this, even for an example. My shoulders are curved. My neck is crunched. My stomach is squashed. My intestines are constricted. It hurts here. And my eyes are probably not at the right distance from the computer screen or the TV or the technology that I'm using. Simply by getting up, what do you notice? First of all, I look better. I already feel better. I feel more positive. My voice changed. I've now got more capacity in my chest to breathe. I've given space for my organs to do what they need to be doing. I spent so much time sitting on my chair in the three years that I, I was head of human resources for this international bank and we were working 16 hours a day for about six days a week that the fat on the back of my leg had a groove in it from the edge of my chair. That's not healthy. All that stagnant fluid that was trapped and pushed and compressed When I looked in the mirror and I saw what I was doing to myself, and when I started to look at some of the statistics about what this modern lifestyle is doing to us, we have all this fantastic technology and we're so clever. Really? Are we? Is that clever? Is this clever? Is this the next stage of our evolution? We're all turning into these weird little insects. We've got numerous diseases which are related to lifestyle-related um, conditions and choices that we make, consciously or unconsciously. The first one is get off your bum and pull in your tum, meaning your tummy. You don't need to go to the gym in order to give yourself health and wellness. Don't get me wrong. Structured, regular exercise is fantastic and I want you to embrace it and enjoy it. But it's what you do hour after hour, day after day after day, week after week, year after year, which is evolving you into a different species. Get off your bum and pull in your tum. Easy to remember? Fantastic. When I realized some of the statistics, when I really touched in and listened to myself, when I realized how really unhappy I was, I was successful, but not. I was scared. I knew I was setting myself up for a health failure at some point. I'm not stupid. I can hear all the messages that are coming to me from society and from all the social media and the different ways that we are told how to be healthy and well, that I was not investing in sustainability of myself. I worked very closely with the CEO, as I mentioned. We had a great time. We did amazing things. We achieved incredible goals for the organization. We both lived on stress, canteen food, skipping meals, coffee, etc. One day I went to him and I said, I need to go on a retreat. And I went to Thailand. I went to a detox retreat. I'm not talking alcohol and drug detox. I'm talking lifestyle detox. I meditated. I did yoga. I fasted, I cleansed, I did clonic irrigation, I slept and I breathed and I was absolutely astounded at how amazing I could feel. 
And I realized that that is our natural state. That what I was doing to myself is not natural. It's natural to wake up every morning with joy in your heart, with a spring in your step, with a clear mind that's sharp, that's creative, that's joyful, and a body that has no pain and operates and functions beautifully. That's the way we're designed perfect. He was thrilled that I was going on this retreat. He knew that I would come back with information that he could potentially use in his own life and that we could share with the organization's employees as well. When I got back, I'd been gone for three weeks, and I called him and I said, oh, I, I'm, can I come down now? Can I share with you everything I've learned? It's amazing. He had just gotten off an international flight, and he was, you know what, come back tomorrow. We'll talk tomorrow and tell me all about it. I want to know what happened. So I said, sure, no problem, no worries, I'll see you tomorrow morning. And I went on my merry way full of joy and light and heaps of energy. When I got to work the next day, he had died. He was 49 and he died of a heart attack. I never got the opportunity to have that conversation with him. So now, at every opportunity, I have that conversation with you. So my top high five to thrive in the nine to five is get off your bum and pull in your tum. Find ways throughout the day to move and move and move and move. It doesn't mean that you go and have to do laps and go to the gym. Just get up. Do some stretching. Unravel, unwind, unconstrict. Breathe. Get some blood flow. You can do self-massage if it's appropriate in your workplace. But at least move. Shake it up. Get the oxygen. Get the circulation going. Get your lymphatic system doing what it's supposed to be doing. You're a human being. Stop being a human doing. And be. My number two is to chew. So many people inhale their food. You're so busy, you're so distracted, you probably eat while you drive, you eat while you type, you've still got emails to do, kids to chase, somewhere to drive to, another meeting, whatever, whatever, you don't pay attention and you just <gasps> inhale it. Why do you have a mouthful of teeth? What's that for? It's not so that you have a nice looking face, although it does help, I'm not sure this looks so good. But you have a mouthful of teeth for a reason. Respect the design. It's perfect. Nothing is there by accident. It's there by design. They're all different shapes and sizes. They've all got a task to do, so get them to do their work. In your saliva is an important element that helps you digest your food. So if you inhale it, it doesn't have time to do its work. Slow it down. What's the rush? Chew and chew and chew. My number three to thrive in the nine to five is to throw the can. How many of you drink soda? I can't see any hands up. Good. If there is a hand up, you're not going to drink soda after today. Throw the can. They're full of toxic chemicals, preservatives, colours, flavours and sugars and caffeine and stuff that is absolutely not good for you. Don't believe the marketing. Your intelligent beings act like an intelligent being. Don't get sucked in by the marketing. When I work with teenagers or any of my clients that come to me with an addiction for soda, for soft drinks, whether that's the full strength ones or the diet ones, I get them to put this image into their mind and put this connection together. It's a powerful one. I hold up a can of soda and I tell them, when they see that can of soda, I want them to think, can, sir. It is a toxic, nasty, dangerous chemical that does not belong in your body. And I'm not saying everything in a can that's liquid is bad for you but what I'm saying is let's wake it up we are so bamboozled by marketing and people who don't care about your health they want your money that we just blindly do it because we want the energy kick 
We like the taste, whatever the reason. You never see anybody advertising soda unless they're in a bikini or in a beautiful environment and they're young teenagers going, when in fact it actually makes you more like this. That's not pretty, it doesn't sell. Kick the can, throw the can away. And when I say the can, I also want you to think about the coffees and all the caffeine that you are artificially, falsely fueling your body with. You are not fueling your sustainable success. You are fueling failure. So number three is to throw the can. Number four is breathe more. Take your hands whenever you're stressed, whenever you're busy, whenever you're busy human doing instead of human being. Put one hand on your belly and the other hand here. Do it now. Notice for just a moment, where are you breathing? Are you breathing in your chest? Are you breathing in your belly? Are you breathing? We take it for granted, but like I said before, there are no mistakes in this design. It is amazingly perfect. Use it to its full advantage. You have this amazing capacity to breathe deeply and fully, how many times a day? Whenever you find yourself stressed, hurried, rushed, human doing, just take a moment and three breaths before an exam, before you go on stage, before you go into a meeting, before you yell at your kids. Just get in touch with yourself. Become a human being for three breaths. My number four, sorry, that's my number four. My number five to thrive in the nine to five is that none of us are getting out alive. Now, I'm not saying that for you to feel all morbid and sad. It's to put it in perspective. If you are busy ticking off endless checklists, doing another 20 emails, climbing another step on the corporate ladder, achieving another goal, but it's not connect to you as the core of who you are and why you are, then you need to have another look at it. We get one precious life. Make it count. Decide what that life is for and go and live it. Don't take it so seriously. It's a TED Talk. Fantastic. It's awesome. I'm up here to have fun with it because, honestly, None of us are getting out alive. I used to stress so much in the office about the next deadline, the next crisis to be solved, the next thing to achieve, the next award. Honestly, I missed most of the point. And the point is that work is supposed to be life, work, balance. Not work with a bit of life and the balance comes later. Do what you love, love what you do, or get out. But don't take it so seriously. Enjoy the journey, because that's the point. Now is what we have. Not tomorrow, right now. Right now on that chair, right now listening to this talk, right now on this red circle. This is what we have. Love it, thrive in it, not just survive. So my high five, next time I see you, the next time you go to school, the next time you see somebody you love, the next time you go to work, high five them. Say, I've got high five to thrive in the nine to five. Number one, move more every day in every way you possibly can. I want you to move more. Get up, move it around, shake it up. Enjoy the experience of being a human. Number two is chew. Your stomach doesn't have any teeth. Don't inhale your food. Slow it down. Pay attention. Enjoy every mouthful. My third one is get free. Three is get free. Kick the can. A can is 
Get it in your head. Break the addiction. If you want to drink that stuff, you do it with your eyes open and your mind very aware of what you're doing to your body. Don't do it because somebody sucked you in with the marketing. And number four, breathe more. Check in. <sighs> it feels good. Number five, no one's getting out alive, so have some fun. Don't take it too seriously. High five each other. High five yourself. And at every opportunity, use the five to thrive in the nine to five. Thank you very much.